Now, do you want to hear a story? Yeah. Right, huh? I told you some before, but I'm going to tell it to you again. Right? Now, when I was a little boy, we had a donkey called Bobby. Like our Bobby that we have, right? But he was our Bobby and he was bigger. And we got him, and I had him when I was in about your class, if you would, third or fourth class. And there's a photograph of Bobby, me and Bobby's back, you know that one? Mm-hmm. Granny and Granny and Anna, right? And the thing was, we used to like the old donkey because the old donkey did jobs. He used to go to the shop. I used to have a little trailer on him and he used to go up to the shop to Belly Gar to get stuff for Ben. Remember that? When I was a little lad. Mm-hmm. And he used to do little jobs and he was handy in the snow and he was handy carrying stuff. And sometimes if I needed an old cylinder of gas, I'd go up to the village for Nanny and get this and I'd bring that back to the donkey. Now, the thing was, there were some people around the village who were well, well off and they had horses. And some people were real nice to have their horses and they were into their horses. But some people had him and they were kind of a bit snobbish for him, right? To be all like, going, oh, my, my horse is worse, you know. It's, it's a fine, fine horse. And not everyone now, but some people were. And they kind of they were, did, um, I suppose, use him as a bit of an old status symbol to show off how well off they were to have a horse and all these fine race horses. <coughs> so there was one particular fellow, I won't mention his name. And he used to always, ah, he wanted to be bigger than everyone. He wanted to show off that he had uh, a big farm and he wanted to show off that he had a pile of horses and he wanted to show off that he was well, well off. And to be fair, <coughs> it was only a bit of an old show with him. His, his own people before that came from nothing, but they got the big house then when the, when the English left and they became, I suppose, what we call it, the Catholic aristocracy, you know, they became the local the local landlord and the local, the local, the local lord. You know, but they weren't really, you know, but that's what they positioned themselves to be. But you went to school and he always kind of a demanded a bit of attention and demanded that he was in charge and he was the strong farmer and this, that and other. And it'd be all talk about their horses and the money. I mean, they'd have one or two people, you would see that in school, you know, we'd have one or two kind of people who'd be kind of a big figure in the classroom. All the rest of the people would lick, be licking up to them. You know, they were sitting all that. Yeah. It'd be all a bit tended to be better and try to do it and they all went pony riding and horse riding and all this kind of stuff to keep up with the big shots right <laughs> that kind of crack so I had poor little Bobby I was happy enough with Bobby I didn't need to go horse riding or anything like that right and that was, some of the people who did it were into it and that's what they're into but I was happy with my lot but your man had said to me so oh, to be talking about horses and I'd be in school and they'd say oh oh here comes uh, the, the biggest uh, the biggest the biggest uh, horsey owner in the village, and I said, "That's right, lads. That's me." And I uh, don't. How was how was the donkey? I said, oh, cool. He was asking for you. Oh, asking for me. Yeah, very funny. And I said, "Yeah, asking for you. Yeah, how are you getting on?" He said, "That was the big horse." He used to say, and I said, "Oh, you're very funny, aren't you?" I said, "No, no, no, not really." But I said, "I always say he's carrying a cylinder of gas for your mother the other day." I said, "Yeah, I won't get enough for out of gas." So we have a car. He says, "So in fact, we have a couple of cars and a tractor." I said, well done, you're right, Leonard, yeah. I said, but we don't, but we're getting this for Nanny. <clears throat> so he'd always try to put you down, right? Try to make himself feel big by putting everyone down. That's classic old bully kind of tactics, right? Mm-hmm. That, that, that classic old crack, right? So he, I think this went on, this went on for, 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 for months, and you know, this kind of crack. But I kind of ignored and just kind of carried on. But here wasn't there this thing called a point to point was coming to Ballygarrett. And dude, basically it was a kind of a horse race that went on between the borough and down to Ballinowlert and then around around the Fodock. There was Stephanie Furlong as the house. And you could drive down there years ago. There was no road there years ago on the way down to Wexford. That's where Oliver Cromwell fought a battle there years ago, just around the Fodock. And it's a right spot, lovely in the sand dunes, lovely and flat. It didn't be boggy, but it's great for the old horse racing, right? So... We're going to be, this was scheduled for about two or three weeks in advance and the boys in school were talking about it and said, oh, I suppose, uh, I says, uh, you'll, be, you'll, be bringing, you'll be bringing your Shergar with you, will you, Mick? I said, no, Les, I wouldn't know. I said, well, we're going down. I said, uh, it's going to be the great race in South Wales. There's going to be horses and champion hurdle runners from all over the country. It's going to be fantastic, you know. And I said, brilliant. I said, great, yes, yeah. I said, uh, I said uh, but to be fair, I said, uh, <laughs> there's no spot for donkeys. It's not a donkey derby. I said, this is a professional horse racing now he had a couple of horses in the stables and uh, they're all really expensive and they'd all be betting at these horses and there'd be a lot of money that'd be worked off 
thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of euros, right? Or pounds back then. So all this went on, all this plan and preparation. I was getting rather were signs going up all over the village and all this, and there was getting big, a lot of attention. It was mentioned on South East Radio. Be big done. It was a Sunday, kind of Sunday things happened on Sunday. So as the week coming up to come by, the boys were. I was getting the kind of the you know, the man at school was saying, "Oh, yeah." <laughs> to see the man to be talking about his horse going to win this, that, and the other end. There was going to be this champions race at three p.m. on that Sunday. It was going to be the big race, you know. This is what we're all waiting to to to. To win, but I didn't pay any attention to it anyway. But they were on to me the whole time about this, uh, about uh, Bobby. He said, Oh, you're entering Bobby, will you? <laughs> entering Bobby. I said, Ah, no, lads, I wouldn't. Bobby, Bobby would have no interest in that. I said, I said, I said Yeah, I said, uh, Well, I said, You can come down if you want to. You can uh, you can watch all of us. I said, uh, I'll probably win it. He says, so With my horses, I've got two very fine, fine horses, so I'm going to be riding one, and so is my brother, who's going to be riding the other one. And says, oh, we're, we're hot favourites. I said, brilliant. I said, oh, well done. It's right, lad. So, went on anyway. And then, that was a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, came along. And I went home and told Mammy. I said, what, we're doing? They're saying this. And I said, ah, don't worry, McDonald, I'm trying to wind you up. And I said, I don't know. So I used to go outside and play with Bobby and do things with Bobby. Now, one thing I did know, so I forgot to tell you this, lads. Bobby was the, the greatest whore for farting, right? And he was the size of nothing. He was a bit bigger than our Bobby. But he was like you fart, just stare at me. Yeah, oh, I'd be. <laughs> so he was farting like you, right? Now the thing was, the farts stank, right? Absolutely stank. And one of the things that he used to do was we used to get vegetables off. There's a man called Andy Carton who's called Gory selling vegetables on a Saturday evening. And Andy had a van and he'd come around. He was we call him. He's called around to everyone's house in the van, and he'd have apples and oranges and stuff. And he had a stall in Gory or Stannins as they call him in Gory, and. He'd come out to us, it was Friday evening, or Saturday evening around 7 o'clock, and he'd have a lot of stuff that wouldn't have maybe damaged fruit to be damaged or vegetables, and he'd, particularly a lot of kind of cabbages and Brussels sprouts and parsnips, that kind of stuff. But your mammy used to buy them, and she cut the bad bits off, and he'd eat them, and then after a real bad denture, the donkey had ate them. But one of the things we'd always know was, every Sunday, what would happen? We'd get them that, that Friday, Saturday night, give them to Bobby. Oh, Bobby, you'd be stinking for about three days afterwards, lad. Oh, he was violent. You go outside yeah. the door, and it was like a farmer spreading shite, right? It was whoa, violent, woeful, like, right? Especially if the wind was blowing. I'd come into the house, lads, and I'd go up through the kitchen, the bedrooms, the hall. Oh, lads, it'd clear, you know, clear the house. And you know, Bobby didn't know any different. That's all he did, right? So I was in school anyway that Wednesday. And the boys, oh, you go and, be, go and race and be kind of your donkey. And uh, cause I'd, I had to go up that Monday, I think, to get a cylinder of gas for Nanny. And uh, oh, the this lad was showing off for the road was you so you got up there getting the cylinder of gas <laughs> like an Eskimo or like you know going off track in your sleigh were you and I said oh yeah that's right you're right that's right and you'd be underneath it you'd be saying nothing but you underneath it be fucking raging as well with the whore right so come Wednesday anyway uh, he, was, he was on to me he said are you going to register last chance to register now last chance to register so you go down register the race <laughs> I said you know we'll show you how real horse racing is done so I went home and told Nanny and uh, I said, Fick it, shall I go down to the down to the borough? So I went down to the borough down to Newtown and I went around and looked at where the lads were running. And Jesus now I said to myself, that's actually not as you know, it's not as far as I thought it was. I knew, cause I knew I knew the place down there. And I came back in and I told Nanny, I said, Nanny said, Will I give will I give Bobby a go running? I said, Ah, Mick, what are you up to? I said, You'll you'll you'll, you'll make a fool of yourself and said the donkey will make a fool of you and you'll be a bigger fool on Monday morning when you go back to school. And I said, ah, I said, but sure, but sure, would that be better to do it than letting them fickers kind of be at me? I said, I know that, but what, you, you, they've got pedigree race horses making you when they got a little old two-year-old donkey, right? And I said, uh, okay, so I went and I went up to, the, there was a man, uh, another man up the road, a farmer man, a lovely man, and he, I said to him, I said, uh, he was in charge of it, some part of it, and I said, "How how do you go about doing this at all? You need to just register there." And yeah, I think it was something like um, three pounds to register three fifty, and I had that money. I saved up money. It's a grand. Now the prize was about five hundred pound, which was a lot of money back then. Mm-hmm. And I said, "Fuck it, I'm going to do this, and I will register." And and I didn't tell Mammy at all, and I went down anyway to school and. Uh, I said, you register, Mick? Do you register for the race? Yes, it's the last, it last call now on Thursday evening. I said, I, I, you know what, lads? I did. And they all started to laugh. And they told the teacher and everything. No, maybe. You're going into, I said, I'm going into the donkey. I said, yeah. I 
I bring the donkey along. Ah, sure, listen, I'll give it a go, I says. Oh, you give it a go, all right, you're going to make a fool of yourself. I said, how are you going to get down with a horse box? I said, no, no, sure, I'll go down a couple of hours before you boys. I'll, I'll go down, Bobby, we'll enjoy the walk down to the beach. Oh, I said, oh, Mick, you'll be the comedy, you'll be the pure clown at this on Sunday. I said, but listen, if you want to be the clown, we'll, we do, you know, we'll, we'll make you, we'll leave you, you can, you can be the clown. So, Friday came, same crack again, school. See you Sunday, Mick, see you at 3 p.m. at the big race. I said, no bother, lads, good luck. So, Saturday evening came anyway, and Andy Cartman came around, and Andy came around to vegetables, and I said, Andy, I said, do you have many Brussels sprouts? I said, Jesus, I've got a box of them there, Mick. I didn't sell it all. They're gone off. No one ate Brussels sprouts in May. And I said, I you, can I have them? I'll get them off you. They're no bother at all. You can them for nothing, I says. And I said, any old cabbage? No, loads of cabbage there, Mick. Loads of parsnips. I said, that's grand. Avocado, so, yeah. They're all just, they're gone off now, Mick. So, oh, give them to me. So I got them anyway, and I fed them into, I, I, I'd been, I'll be honest with you, I hadn't really fed Bobby since Thursday, and I kept them hungry, right? So without them and Andy and be jizz Bobby at them all. Right? Yum, 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 yum. I them all up. Jeez, that he was barely in the walk right now. This lad could not run a race. He was so fat now at this stage. It'd be like you after eating Chinese Nelly, right? You just after you after eating too much. So Sunday morning came. Oh and Bobby was lying out and that was a bit of a bang off now, I'll be honest with you. Now, right? He was all full up. And I said, oh, Jesus, this yolk's on. Now, the yolk's on at 3 o'clock. Now, I'd want to be leaving around 12 o'clock to get down there in time because it's slow and the donkey was fat now at this stage. So I sauntered on the way down to the donkey and Nanny said, oh, Mick, you said you're going to make an easier. I said, ah, sure, I said, I'll give it a go. So I got down anyway and there was a massive crowd there. And there was ice cream vans and there was... Wall search was a real thing. The whole place was turned into a kind of a fair day, and there was a couple of smaller races on, and lads from school were there. Lads were eating candy floss, and it was a real good atmosphere. And the boys were taking bets up there, and I noticed my thing. There was fifteen horses in the race, and uh, here was uh, my horse was a uh, my donkey Bobby. So it was just called Bobby, and Bobby was down like apparently the odds. The way it works is if you're not very good, they give you these real high odds, right? So I anyway. I said, Jesus, what am I might as well do? I said, uh, I had five pounds saved up and I went up to a man I'd never bet before and I said, I'm going to put five pounds now on my horse to my little donkey to win or my donkey to win. And he says, fair enough. He says, we'll take the five pounds off you. I said, that's the donkey. He said, yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. He says, we'll take that. So that was grand. Now I was down five pounds now here. That's, that was on to, I was, I was in debt now at this stage and he was right now we, I was happy, pardon. <laughs> so we all gathered around half two came and all the lads from school they were laughing at Donkey and they all they came up and jiving at the man and their brother and they're all in their horsey gear and they were with their whips and their big long boots and all fine horses now as well to be fair. And they all lined up with this line, everyone there, and I was on Bobby's back now, I was about seven I'd say, but at Nan's age. And they all had the whips and ready to keep the world horses like Whip and sure. I suppose the race be over in about maybe f- f- seven minutes, eight minutes, really. So and the marks get set and off for the main go now. And next minute they all said the man goes to all the rest of them. There's fourteen rest of them. He said, "Let's." He said, "Oh, he said let him off there. Let him off. Let him off." He says, "He said, let him off there. Let, let him have a head start." And I go on there, Mick. He says, "Go on." They all start jeering. So Bobby. Oh, on, not too fast. Oh, on a little bit more. Let's come on, Bobby. And Bobby let on. And he had a bit of energy to go forward. He went on maybe about 50, 50 metres. And the boys were, because I knew damn well that all they lived through was just go, go, and their horses would out past mine. You know that? Mm-hmm. So what I did, Bobby was all built up and his belly was full. And he was like, oh, and I said, right, here we go. And the wind was blowing up from the south, southeast, <laughs> right, blown up, right. And the night get Bobby's ear and went over, give it a pull. <laughs> A big wet fart, right? And the wind blew, and the wind blew into the face of the horses that were behind me. And what's that? What's up? And in about seven or eight of them just kick. Oh, the jockeys, they all booked, and the horses, the jockeys on the ground. And once you hit the ground, that means you can't get back up out of the race. Couldn't believe it. So it's about eight of them gone, 15 in the race. There was seven left, including myself. So six left, including the two the two bro- brothers. 
and I said, I looked behind and started to laugh, and the man knew there was something up. So I said, right, Bobby, I give him a nudge of the ass, and he legged it on, and poor old Bobby could barely go 50 yards ahead. And what to do again? Grab the ear. <laughs> and another burst. A burst came out, and uh, four more horses down, and they were stinking out. of a bit of like... <laughs> A bit, a, bit, a bit of a wet fart as well. Oh, jeez, they were in the horse's face and the jockeys they were like, oh, boo, boo, oh, boo, getting sick. And their two brothers were going, we're going to get you fortune. We're going to get you fortune, right? Now, I said, oh, Jesus, what are we going to do now? And you, Bobby, didn't have too much left in the, in the, in the tank now because we said, what are we going to do? So Bobby ran on and the uh, two boys ran on slapping their arse off their whips off their their horses and their horses were fine horses and they're coming up on behind me, behind me, behind me and I saw them and as I saw them, what did I do? I grabbed the donkey's two ears like this and with my other hand I lifted up the tail and I was juggling like this with the tail and I pulled the ears like this like you pulled the back of a gear stick and <laughs> And I got the tail and let it go. And I started to sprint around. And it created a kind of like a typhoon. It spread out. And this, uh, this stuff went everywhere. There was wet matter and dry matter and all types of gases. Brussels sprouts like you could never. And they dosed the two boys and they got covered. And our horses got covered. And the horses just went down like this. Man, rolled over. Rolled over one fella on his leg. Oh, he was crying and whinging. And he was crying, my leg, my leg, my leg. And then the other horse went over on top of the other horse. And sat the other fella in with his leg. So the two boys were down. Oh, man. And Bobby was still farting and spinning. And the splutter was going everywhere. And I said, oh, cheers, lads. It's all right. And the judges were disqualified. They were out of the race. And there was no one left any me. And I would have wondered, the race would have been random. It was a long old stretch now, and maybe seven minutes. But you know how long it took me? Really? Uh, about two hours. I said, fuck you, so. I said, I'm going to carry on. And I'm not going to stress out my Sunday. I said, and I, all the children and all the people gathered around me. And I couldn't get off the donkey, because if I got off the donkey, I'd be disqualified. And instead with me, and they walked, and they took photographs. There was a fella from BBC there with a the television. There's an interview of me on YouTube. It's a bit grainy, and it's me walking along, talking to the, or to the reporters, going, how do you feel you're going to win this race? I said, ah, sure, I'll get there in the end. And uh, why are you going so long? I said, I'm taking me time. I said, Bobby, there is don't put him under too much pressure. And I got to the end, and I won the 500 euros. And do you know what I did? 500 pounds. And I won the, me, me, the, 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 the money from the bet that I put on. And what I did was I actually donated the 500 pounds to the horse sanctuary for the poor old race horses to get hurt and get damaged normally get put down and my 500 euros went to give them a little bit of a better life you know of that kind of guy you know so that was the story and i had the rest of the money then and um we used the rest of the money me and nanny and then i got me me i got carpet for my bedroom and wallpaper and i got a, a new uh wardrobe for stuff and man, nanny had some money as well and your man never ever said anything afterwards because what happened was they actually the fellas in the paper took photographs of them and they put them up in the pay uh, up on the on the newspaper and they made a show of them they in the garage and the echo and really you, you couldn't see it but the smell of them the smell of shite off them and uh, they're fine race horses too now they stank to be fair and they didn't get too much uh too much work i would either and uh yeah, there were the boys were always known as as a smelly. I won't say their names now, but there were two. They always called them the smellies after that, and Bobby, won, and that's a true story. <laughs>